Hey guys, it's Mr. Henning, and since I was going to be out today, I figured I would make a short little video to introduce the activity that you guys are going to be doing today. The learning goal for this activity is that you'll be able to describe the key attributes of the parent functions. These are the functions that we looked at on Friday. So, let's get started. Your first task is going to be a card sort activity. So, you will each receive, with your partner, a set of 45 different cards. Okay? And your task is to organize them into nine different sets of five cards each. Yeah? In each set there will be the function name, which is white, the equation for each function, which is on pink, the graph for each equation on blue, the domain for each equation on green, and the range in gold. So you are to group these cards into the sets of five by which ones match. Okay, after that, transfer your results to your parent function book. We hadn't recorded the domain and range yet, so grab your function book and transfer those in. Try not to use the parent function book as you use to do this activity, but if you need to, that's fine. There will be a key at the front of the room that you can use to check your answers. My only rule is if you go to check the key, you can take your parent function book up there with you, but you must leave your pencil at your desk. Now there will be no copying, okay? Okay, then your second task is to complete the rest of your parent function book with the other different attributes of each function. Now some of these will require a little explaining, so let me explain. So. For each function, you'll need to describe the x-intercept and the y-intercept. Okay, these are terms that you should have heard before in Algebra 1. The x-intercept is where it crosses the x-axis, and the y-intercept is where it crosses the y-axis. In the case of the quadratic parent function, the x-intercept is right there at 0, 0. Okay? The function barely touches down and hits 0, 0, and then returns back up. The y-intercept is also located at 0, 0, because this is where it crosses the y-axis. Okay, so you'll also be asked to describe the symmetry of each function. Okay, there are three different kinds of symmetry that you might see. In the case of the linear function, this is some has symmetry about the origin. This is because, the origin being at 0, 0, if you rotated the function 180 degrees, it would map back onto itself. This is symmetry about the origin. The quadratic function has symmetry about the y-axis. This is because, if you reflected it over the y-axis, it would reflect onto itself. It is also possible that some functions such as the square root function, would have no symmetry whatsoever. Okay? Also, you'll be asked to find the minimums and maximums of each one of these functions. Now, in the case of the linear function, it has no maximum and it also has no minimum. This is because it continues to go on and on forever in the positive direction and also infinitely in the negative direction. Thus, it doesn't have a clear max or min. In the case of the quadratic function, it doesn't have a maximum because it will continue going upward and upward indefinitely. So it has no max. But it does have a minimum. At the origin right here, at 0, 0, the function touches down and comes back up again. That's a minimum. Okay. One other thing you'll be asked is to describe where each function is increasing or decreasing. Okay, we'll use interval notation to note this. Okay, in the case of the linear function, it's always increasing. We're talking about it increasing as we're going to the right. So we can say that it's increasing on the interval negative infinity to infinity. And decreasing, it's never decreasing. Okay, now in the case of the quadratic function, okay, it's decreasing in parts and increasing in parts. At, the fir in the, at first in the graph, it's decreasing. 
So we can say that it's decreasing on the interval negative infinity to zero. It's increasing after it reaches zero because it goes back up. So it's increasing on the interval of zero to infinity. Okay, We're Precisely at zero, it's neither increasing nor decreasing, hence why we have used parentheses on those ends of the intervals. The last thing is to describe asymptotes. This is a word you probably haven't heard before. An asymptote is defined as a line that the function approaches, but it never reaches. You can have horizontal or vertical asymptotes. In the case of the rational function here, okay, this is a good example of both. It has a horizontal asymptote here. The x-axis serves as the horizontal asymptote because the function approaches it at either end, but it never quite touches it. So our horizontal asymptote is y equals 0. This is because this is a horizontal line where all at all times y equals 0. Okay, now for the vertical asymptote. The vertical asymptote is here at the y-axis. This is because as it gets closer to 0 and 0, the function gets closer and closer to that line, but never touches it. That vertical asymptote is x equals 0, because on the y-axis, there is, at all times, that line has a x value of 0. Okay, so that was fast, but hopefully that clears that up. Again, all of these are included in the key at the front of the room, so after you've tr thought about it for a little bit, take your parent function book up to the front, leaving your pencil at your desk, and check and see how you did. Okay, we'll talk about it some more tomorrow when I get back. Alright, so I hope you guys have a good day, and I will see you tomorrow.